I'm Jason Park and behind me I have a 2017 Lamborghini Huracan LP580-2. That's a rear wheel drive exotic monster. My name is Brian and this is why I drive a 2017 Lamborghini Huracan. Why the Lamborghini Huracan? Uh, for me, uh, it's two reasons. One, it's the nostalgia and the, the brand of Lamborghini. Uh, and second, it's a childhood dream come true. Something I've wanted forever. So this is a, a, a pretty rare color. This is Grigio Telesto, which uh, this one is actually uh, the same color as my old one, which is why I got this one. I had a 2013 Gallardo that was also this color. So this is... Uh, uh, my my brand. This is my color. So this car's got quite a few mods. Um, we'll start with uh, ground up. So the wheels are AGL wheels that I had custom made. Uh, these were supplied by Butler Tire. Uh, the car is lowered on Velocity AP springs. The uh, let's see. The brakes are uh, Grigio discs installed by Eurofed. Um, the rear bumper is a Vorsteiner rear bumper supplied by uh, Solo Motorsports. The rear wing, Vorsteiner wing, uh, carbon fiber supplied by Butler Tire. Side skirts, uh, Vorsteiner as well. Window tint by Tint World. Um, on the inside, uh, we've got some modifications as well. We've got carbon fiber vents that were done by Hydro Dips. Uh, we've got um, a custom stereo that was installed by Cartoons. We've also got, um, uh, let's see, engine, so it, it is tuned it's got intake on it. Uh, let's see. Um, exhaust is by Avior. The exhaust tips were custom done by Powder Coaters of Atlanta. Tail light tin done by me. Probably my fondest memory is... Uh, it's probably two, actually. So the first one was the first rally that... Um, my wife and I went on together down in Florida. It was a Lamborghini rally. Uh, that was 100 Lamborghinis going from Miami to Tampa uh, in, in the fastest way possible. It's the first time I'd really gone on a rally. Went with a bunch of the Lamborghini owners uh, of Atlanta here. Uh, about 14 of us went. And that was just something that I never experienced with any other type of car. I've owned Corvettes and, and everything else. And the Lamborghini community is something different. Uh, second one would probably be, so we did a fundraiser with uh, Woodstock PD a couple months ago for a young man named Ezra, and if it wasn't for the car, I probably would have never had a chance to meet and help that young man, so uh, that's probably the, the top of my favorite kind of charity thing that we've done, but uh, that is absolutely in my, my top two. Oh, there's so many. Um, you know, probably the the craziest thing that I've ever done with it is, uh, well, craziest, I'm not going to say the craziest thing I've done. I'll tell you the craziest moment. So we, uh, me and a couple of our, our friends in the supercar club, we were coming down from the mountains and uh, it just happened to be that, you know, at the top of the mountain, it was... It was pretty dry, but as we got down, it started raining. And I'll never forget, as I was coming down the mountain, my front tires kind of slipped out. I, I oversteered a little bit, and then within a half a second, I was oncoming to a uh, dump truck. And, and that was one of them. 
Uh, the second one, probably the absolute craziest, we were coming back from that same Lamborghini rally down in Miami, and I was towing the car on a trailer back up, and the brakes on the trailer caught on fire. So, pulled over real quick, and on the off-ramp facing oncoming traffic, I had to pull the car off the trailer with half the trailer on fire, uh, and then drive the car up the on-ramp backwards with an 18-wheeler facing me. <laughs> Uh, which was pretty uh, pretty crazy. And as the wheel bearing caught on fire, it lit the brakes on fire, and then the you know the shit around the brakes caught on fire, and flames are coming up through the uh, the uh, the wheel well. So as I wake up from this this, I mean I was knocked out, I was tired as hell, and I see the flames in the side mirror. We're on 75 North, doing 80 miles an hour, and there's construction on both sides, so there's no where to pull over, no nothing. So for like a mile and a half. We're panicking as the car trailer's on fire and we're looking for an exit. So finally we find an exit and as soon as we hit the exit, like we were just off the highway, like I was like, stop, stop, stop. So I jump out, we're unbuckling the car, flames are shooting out. I had nothing to put it out with. So in order to get in the car, I had to open the door, climb over the, the fire. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was something else. You know, the guy, thankfully, the guy in an 18-wheeler that was trying to exit as well, he stopped. He knew what I was trying to do. You could see the fire. So he kind of stopped traffic, and finally we got the car off, pulled the trailer up to a rest stop, and uh, thank God nothing happened. But that was that was a, probably the craziest shit that's ever happened to me. So I, I think most of the guys, at least, that I socialize with, with the supercars and exotics here in Atlanta, um, we don't... We, we don't look at it maybe the same way other people would. So we look at the cars as more of a Swiss Army knife. You know, if you want to take it out to a fancy place and, you know, have black tie events and stuff like that, that's fine. Some people use them for that. But you can also use them, you know, they're a great way to meet people. You know, I go everywhere, people come up, hey, can I look at your car? Can I talk to you? What do you do? You know, you got any advice for me? Um, it unlocks a lot of doors. You know, it's, it's put me in situations that I probably wouldn't have been in if it wasn't for the car. I've met people that I probably would have never met. Business opportunities that, um, you know, have come about through meeting those same people. Um, the car's a Swiss Army knife. It's fun to drive. You can go and drive it daily. Um, it drives super easy. In fact, uh, it's probably blasphemy to say it, but probably as easy as a Toyota Camry, just faster and louder. Um, you know, and, and I think the personal achievement, I think that's the other thing for me. You know, this is something I always wanted. It's something I worked really hard for. Um, fought a lot of ups and downs, but in the end, this was my reward to myself. It, it, it's definitely an emotional experience. Um, you know, sometimes uh, it's pride. I think, you know, you feel good driving it. But I think sometimes it, it's also, you know, the fun aspect. You know, my favorite thing to do in the summer is hit the highway right as the sun's going down, windows down, radio up as loud as I can, and just drive. And that's kind of my meditation. Um, I think the other one uh, that it kind of puts in me is responsibility. You know, I think it, you know, having such a visible car that most people would admire and, you know, even down to the kids that come up and say, what do you do? You're going to have two types of owners, and, and I know them both. Those that use it as an opportunity to talk to people and meet people and better people and, and better themselves. And those that look down on those people and they don't want to talk to them and they don't want to engage with them. So I think the responsibility that we have, or at least that I feel I have, is to represent, you know, properly what some of these kids want to be when they grow up and what they want to have. You know, I don't want them to think that, you know, they grow up and they have a supercar and they have to become an asshole. You know, I want them to know that they should use it for good and help people just like we do. So, uh, advice for buying one? Um, make sure you know what you're buying. Um, I've had a lot of friends that, you know, buy these cars sight unseen. Some get lucky, some absolute horror stories. 
Um, I got a buddy right now, had his car in the, in the shop 16 weeks. I think he bought it and a week later went in the shop and he hasn't seen it since. You know, a lot of it comes down to doing a proper pre-purchase inspection, buying it from someone where you know the history, um, you know, don't just trust, you know, auto check, you know, or Carfax uh, alone, look at them both. Sometimes there's reporting issues. Um, what do I, what do I say to the young kids out there that want one? The only thing stopping you is you. Um, you know, parents ask me, what, what did, you know, what advice do you have for my kid? And I, you know, everyone's gut response is, you know, go to college, stay in school, this, that. One thing that surprised me, most of the supercar owners that I know and I've met, most of them are entrepreneurs. So I would say, follow your dreams and wherever that leads you, it's going to, if you're good at it and your dream is what you put your passion into, you're going to be successful and you'll have everything you want. Time for a little POV action. Time for me to get behind the wheel for a quick little review. I'm excited. Hit the button, hold it down. Yep. Okay, so there is no drive button or mode. Okay. You just put it into gear. So you pull the paddle back, keep your foot on the brake, you're going to shift into automatic first gear no nope. you're in automatic now okay now the only thing that'll take it out of automatic well there's two things one you put it in manual mode okay now the a is gone okay okay if you downshift it's going to kick it into manual mode anyway if you do anything to the sticks okay it's, it's going to go automatically manual. go into manual so automatic you have street mode sport we, mode we will keep it in street mode okay <laughs> all right and then you get in and listen to the engine Now it's going into race mode, it's opening all the things in the back, it's getting all the valves opened up. Wow. And now you cannot put it into automatic mode. You have to drive it as a manual. Wow. So let's go back to A. Yep. Now we're okay. Can we turn the music down? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, just turn it on. Okay. I can tell you sitting in here right now, this feels like a Batmobile, Iron Man's car. Like he should have driven the Lamborghini instead of the Audi. Oh, 100%. 100%. I was so disappointed. I'm like, why would you do that? I, and Audi owns Lamborghini. Yeah. They could have gave him one. This, I mean, it, it feels so futuristic in here. Like just sitting in the cockpit, it feels expensive. But you feel like you're in alien technology almost. Yeah, you really do. I mean... To me, and I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, it almost feels like a cockpit, you know, for sure. You know, everything is, you know, traditional buttons, finger touch. Everything is, you know, stacked in groups. You've got your, your, your lights and windows. You've got your heater. You've got your radio. You've got your transmission. You know, it's just everything's all sectioned. You know, there's no stalks or anything for, you know, directionals. This is your directional. Then you cancel it. You push it in. These are your headlights, your, your high beams, your wipers. You know, there's no button to turn. It's, you, you turn it on, and then you hit it to turn it off. It's super simple. It's like, it's it almost feels like like if racing, like the racing interior was sexy. 
Oh yeah. Like it's sexy racer. It is. It's, <laughs> you know, and it's the materials. It's you know, it's the simplicity. You know, this car in particular, um, you know, is, is a little different. Uh, it's got some heritage to the design. So there's a famous driver. His driver number was six, uh, and he helped design the Huracan. So every shape on this all has six sides. You know, in honor of him. So you won't like oh. that's. Yeah, everything has six sides. Wow. So, you know, the switches have six sides. The door handles have six the sides. Vents. The vents yeah. have six sides. The dashboard has six sides. The top cover has six sides. Like, everything has six sides. Um, it's the attention. It, this is an art piece. It is. It's an art piece. It's historic. It's it's back to, you know, like, uh, designing with a purpose, not just a car. It's, it's, it's more than that. This is incredible. Can we take it for a quick little? Yeah, go for it. Let's do it. You want to go? Yeah, let's go. So which way do you prefer to go? That way, this way. So right now, you're in automatic mode. Yep. And you can drive this just like you can. It feels special. Yeah. It feels so special. This, uh, and I've only been in it for now, like, two minutes, but this feels like the most special car I've ever been in. I like to think so. <laughs> you know, a lot of differences uh, with the Huracan. A lot of differences with the Huracan versus the Gallardo. Um, you know, the, the biggest improvement, even though the engine's pretty much the same, there are obviously some, some upgrades, but one of the biggest things is the transmission. This is the first V10 model of Lamborghinis made with a dual clutch transmission. So that's why you can drive it as simply as an automatic. In the old Gallardo, it was a single clutch, very heavy shifting, very aggressive. You had to work it, you know, all the time. Every time you stop, you're putting it in a neutral. Would, would you say, like, if someone was looking to buy a Lamborghini, that a Gallardo would be a good first step? Yeah, I mean, the Gallardo is still very raw. Uh, some of the Gallardos, depending on the year, is really with Lamborghini, Lamborghini on it, not Audi Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot more tradition. The sounds are different you know each piece is custom a lot of a lot of heritage in the gallardo but um they will quickly fall in love with the huracan i'm already in love so what's what's the retail on one of these uh new they range anywhere from 250 to uh well, uh, an sto is 550. oh wow yeah wow yeah so big spread a lot of that's the, you know, what you want. Do you want two-wheel drive, all-wheel drive? Do you want carbon fiber? Do you want Alcantara? Do you want, you know, custom colors? Do you want custom brakes? Do you want, you know, everything is a la carte. Right, right. Brakes, nine grand. This, eight grand. You know, at Persona Paint, 15 grand. And you can really get up there pretty quick, as you can imagine. And I see that the visibility in here is actually pretty good. Yeah, even with the louvers, if you look out the rear view mirror, yeah. you can still see out very well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, the Gallardo was totally different no visibility. The Huracan is more cap forward, yep. I feel, and you, you get a lot more visibility. This actually feels more like a, a spaceship. Like, so when I drove the Corvette, it was like a fighter jet, but this feels more like a spaceship. Like when I think of like Independence Day interior, yeah. <laughs> that, this is what I think of. Yeah, I would agree to that. That's kind of the feeling I get too. Wow, man. You feel different when you drive. You do. I almost feel like, like, you know, like I got like six foot three, like I got a little taller. <laughs> yeah. Sitting on a little fatter wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it, it's race royalty. That's yeah, yeah. You know, I never understood prior to driving the Lamborghini, right? I was like, okay, yeah, more horsepower. It's exotic. It looks good. It's designed well. But when you actually get into it, there's almost like an energy shift, yeah. right? It almost like makes you become the highest version of yourself absolutely yeah it's you know people are watching you i mean i can't go down the highway without seeing everyone out with a camera and at that point you're representing not only yourself but the brand yeah you know yeah. you know it's not like you're driving a you know a car that no one pays attention to you get noticed oh for sure you know so for sure you have a responsibility what do they say with, with more power comes more responsibility you know what you know? that was that from spider-man yeah so yeah. so so let's do uh with more horsepower comes more that's awesome. We'll end it on that note. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. All right, guys. So I just got done driving the Lamborghini. I'm heading home. 
and I just wanted to talk to you guys really quick about how it felt. You know, we were having such a good conversation, getting to know the history about the car, uh, that I just wanted him to keep talking uh, about it, right? And I just kept listening, so I didn't get to properly tell you guys uh, what it felt like. But driving the Huracan literally made you feel like you were your kid self and everything that you wanted to accomplish as a kid came true. That's what it felt like. It, it, it feels magical. It feels like like you can do anything in the world and being in the driver's seat of the Lamborghini reminds you of that. It just reminds you that anything's possible, that you can achieve anything if you just get after it, right? It felt so special. I don't know how to explain it. Like, out of all the cars that I've driven, and I used to be one of those guys that, obviously I'm into tuner cars, I've owned nothing but tuner cars, but I used to be one of those guys like, yeah, you know, I'll take my S2000 or, you know, my RX-7 over a Lamborghini, whatever. But now after driving the Lamborghini, and just, it, it's a feeling that it, it embodies you. It, it, it makes you realize that anything is possible, that you can own that car. Like it gives you that feeling. It makes you feel like a better version of yourself. It makes you feel like almost like a super, a superhero version of yourself. The Lamborghini Huracan is special. And I, I couldn't see it before, right? Like I couldn't see it because I couldn't feel it. I could look at it, like you can see it and be like, okay, it's a pretty looking car, right? But when you feel it, everything clicks. And mind you, I didn't even have to get on it to understand that. I didn't have to feel the full force and the full power of the Lamborghini to feel that. I could feel that the moment I sat in the car. And I say that to say this. The Lamborghini is special in every way. And now I understand why people buy the Lamborghini. I, I, I understand why it's held in such regards after all these years. I understand why, you know, it's in a level and a league of its own because it's not like your Skylines or your Supras or your RX-7s. It's completely different. You're literally driving an art piece everywhere you go. It's artistic in every way, from the gauge cluster to the steering wheel to its its heritage, the way it sits you back, the seating, the, the roof line. Like when you look in there, and when I said, hey, this kind of reminds me of like Independence Day spaceship, I mean that in the best, sexiest way. It just felt out of this world. So if someone's looking to buy a Lamborghini Huracan and you have the money to do so, I highly recommend that you do. Or at least take it for a test drive so you can feel how special it truly is and how it shares uh, that feeling with the driver and its passengers. Until next time. I'm a gold vibe, I'm fuck all my mood. I'm a gang bitch, I'm shy, I'm gonna just roll. Leo, get the door. Got it. Sometimes, you have to become the monster to save the one you love. Your mother's labs came back in. The cancer is spreading fast. She does need surgery. Um, without that payment, tomorrow she's going to be discharged. In two days, we're gonna rob Chino. Come on, Chino! God! Come on, man, I have a family! Don't do this shit, man! I'm 
I mean, there's got to be another way. There is no other way, Leo. If we don't rob Gino right now, my mom is as good as dead. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. 